In this video, I'll be talking about my experience with the 531 Boring But Big program, which is a variation of Jim Wendler's 531 program. You do your main 531 work, your heavy working sets, and then you straight after that, you do five sets of 10 of the main lift at like 50 or 60% of your training max. So it's a very high volume program. I've now completed three cycles of the program or about 12 weeks. So I have a bit of experience. I'm going to explain the program to you, talk about my experience and my thoughts on the program and then what I plan to do moving forward. So the structure of the program, it's a four week program. You have three weeks of work followed by one week of deload. At the start of the program, you'll calculate your training max, which will be about 85 or 90% of your one rep max. And you do this for each of the four main lifts. So squat, overhead press, deadlift, and bench press. You'll either estimate or test all four of those lifts to find out what your one rep max is and then you'll calculate 90% of that or 85%. And then all of the percentages you use in this program will be based off of that training max. In the first week, you'll start with three sets of five with the last set, so your top set, that will be 85% of your training max. In the second week, you'll do three sets of three with the top set at 90% of your training max. And in the third week, you'll do one set of five, one set of three, and one set of one with the top set, the last set being 95% of your training max. And on the top set in all three weeks, you will do as many reps as you can. And the goal is to set new rep PRs every workout. And once you've done three weeks and then done your deload, you'll add two and a half kilos to your bench press and your overhead press training max. And you'll add five kilos to your squat and deadlift training max. And this ensures like very slow, steady progression. So each cycle you progress, not like every workout or every week. Each cycle you add a bit of weight, which is every four weeks. I started the program using the beefcake variation of the Boring But Big program. Uh, but after a couple weeks, I moved on to a custom program which was loosely based on the beefcake protocol. The assistance work included dips, chin-ups, rows, single leg work, face pulls and ab work. Uh, I removed the dips because they hurt my shoulders and to replace the dips I used either like incline uh, bench press or flat dumbbell bench press or close grip bench press and I switched to weighted chin ups instead of high rep chin ups. Uh, I kept the rows and the face pulls in. Sometimes I would do ab work to be honest I was pretty lazy and I didn't have much time so I often skipped it and I usually ended up skipping the single leg work because I didn't have time to include it but the single leg work is optional in the program and I added some more exercises when I had time so I did some direct arm work some farmer walks and some upright rows but the core of the program was based around the beefcake program since I was short on time I made very good use of supersets and giant sets which is where you do one set of exercise immediately followed by a set of a different exercise and this was really useful for saying time because I only had like one hour to work out before I had to go to uni. The accessory work is five sets of 10 reps of the main lifts at 60% of your training max. And I found this to be far too easy for bench press and it was decently challenging for the other three lifts. For two cycles, I stuck with the original main lifts as my five by 10 work before I started experimenting with different variations. I made very good progress sticking with the main lifts and my progress was not as good with the variations. So I replaced squats with front squats which I find extremely difficult. I used front squats because my quads are weak compared to my posterior chain. And that meant that my squats were like posterior chain dominant. So I was kind of doing good morning squats instead of the nice kind where your knees are forward and your torso is upright. I was leaning forward quite a lot and using like my glutes and my lower back to move the weight instead of my quads. So I used front squats instead of normal squats to try and address that quad weakness. I think in hindsight, it would have been better to do heavy front squats to address this rather than the five by 10. I'm sure the five by 10 was pretty good for my quad size, but not necessarily max strength to aid on regular squats and deadlifts off the floor. I replaced overhead press with behind the neck press which seemed to reduce my overhead press strength which was quite annoying uh, in fact my my overhead press plateaued pretty hard almost immediately after introducing the behind the neck press uh, they feel good to me they feel nice like on my traps and my side delts and stuff but it seems like my overhead press just suffered when i started including them instead of actual overhead press volume and also with the behind the neck press you have to use lighter weight so i wasn't getting that specificity of using like the heavy weight for my overhead press 
And also, I don't think I was getting enough front delt volume in general, so my shoulders just weren't getting enough work done to them. It was just like one heavy set a week, really, uh, to my front delts. And I replaced deadlifts with deficit deadlifts standing on a 15 kilo plate to attack my weakness off the floor. And these felt pretty good, but the weight was a lot lower than I would usually use for my regular deadlift at 5x10. So it might have been like too easy and not really made me that much stronger. I replaced my bench press with feet up bench press, which felt good. The 5x10 weight was basically the same for feet up bench press as like the normal recommended bench press because uh, like I said earlier I found the normal like bench press weight quite easy at like 60% of your training max so doing the feet up variation with the same weight was fine and it's definitely good to help you like isolate your chest and your pushing muscles rather than using leg drive so much. So as for my thoughts on the program I think the feeling of setting rep PRs every workout is really motivating. I think it's a really good way to get people to keep coming back into the gym because you know like every session you have an opportunity to beat some numbers that you've done before. I think it's good that it's intentionally slow progress so you're only only adding weight every cycle instead of every workout or every week which forces you to not like over stretch yourself. There's no like randomly maxing out. You have a slow and steady progress and if you repeat these cycles for like a long time you're going to see really good progress however the program i don't think is great for increasing your one rep max strength on the ones week which is when i'm using like the heaviest weight in the cycle and i'm on the last top set where you're only prescribed one rep but obviously you do as many as you can i would often do at least like 10 reps on deadlifts and maybe like seven reps on the other three lifts so this is definitely a volume program in my opinion uh, I'm sure there are other variations that are like adapted specifically for powerlifting using high percentages and stuff, but this is definitely a high volume program, not necessarily good for increasing your one rep max, although mine did increase a little bit. And as for my future plans, I'm going to carry on with the boring but big beefcake program and doing it properly this time. So I'm not going to switch out the main lifts for other variations. Uh, all my 5x10 work instead of doing it at 60% of the training max I'm going to do first set last set numbers which means if my first working set of my 5-3-1 work is 75% of my training max then my 5x10 work is also going to be at 75% so this is going to be like much harder in the volume component of the program and you don't do as many reps as possible on the top set so this is going to be like even less specific to increase in your one rep max but it's going to be like a lot of really brutal volume uh, so most of the other fluff that i had added to the program will have to be cut out because i just won't be able to handle it because like the 5x10 work is going to be so heavy and so much volume that i'm going to need like very long rest breaks and i'm just not going to be able to handle doing all this extra pump stuff also the extremely high volume is going to force me to eat like an animal because if i don't i'm just not going to be able to last through all the sets uh, so, so that's something i struggle with is like eating enough food so this is going to really incentivize me because if i don't eat enough food i'm not going to be able to complete all the reps i need to overall i really enjoyed the program i, I was definitely making like consistent measurable progress with the rep prs and I feel like I could have gone on like a lot longer making consistent progress and that's hopefully what I'm going to do. So I definitely recommend this program to anyone who's like early intermediate stage who doesn't need any fancy periodization stuff just yet. You can still do linear periodization. Uh, I would say if you're a novice, which means like you can still add weight every workout and be fine you know, just making progress every workout or even every week, I would say stick with a novice program because you want to like milk all your novice gains and move on to something like this when your progress really starts to slow down.